There. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're from. I'm actually coming to you from Charlotte, North Carolina today. I'm Suki Jeffries with Defying Expectations Over 60. And uh, welcome to my hotel room come studio. And I'm really excited uh, today. You know, I do this uh, this live stream, Defying Expectations Over 60, because um, I'm at an age now where a lot of people and many of my friends have said, why aren't you slowing down? Like you're supposed to be slowing down over the age of 60 and, you know, planning to really retire. And uh, I'm just not ready yet. And they, I uh, am privileged to know a ton of men and women who are in the same boat. They are not ready uh, to slow down. And today... Uh, I've got my friend Nikki Cummins here. She is from, um, she lives in the Toronto, Ontario area and has for the past 45 years. And she spent 35 years as a bureaucrat in the government. And she left to join her husband in his health related business, where she took on the challenge of reshaping her own inside the box bureaucratic thinking to become an action oriented, no need to have the plan finished kind of person. So Nikki is 76 and does not see her age as a barrier or a liability. And she's committed to continue building their business so she can be an example to her son, daughter-in-law, and four grandchildren and others in, in their community so that they can see that they can all continue to contribute regardless of age. Though maintaining health, fitness, and energy is paramount. So Nikki, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much, Suki. It's great to be here. I'm kind of excited about this. I've never done this before. It's the first time for me. Oh my gosh. Well then welcome to uh welcome to my funny little interview platform. <laughs> <laughs> we just do little short uh snippets, snippets with people about mm -hmm. um about defying expectations over 60. So um tell us a little bit about you. You told me earlier that you've always been kind of a, I think you said a quiet adventurer. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I, well, I because I don't talk a lot, a lot about it, but I mean, when I finished high school, I was out the door in three days. I was on a train out west all by myself. First time I'd ever been away from home. And um, I had a job out there that I had gotten on my own. And I'm um, pretty independent uh, in a lot of ways, but not outrageously so, not mm -hmm. defiant or whatever, just doing my own thing when mm -hmm. I wanted to. And um, it's been quite an adventure. Uh, I mean, I was out west. I went to school out there. Um, I ended up uh, back in Toronto and then up north, northern Ontario, in a little tiny community this big at the end of the <laughs> road uh, as a volunteer, a community volunteer with the Company of Young Canadians. This was a generation ago, so many of your, your listeners are not going to know what that's all about. But nope. it was an adventure, a real adventure. And What did you do up there? Um, I worked in an Indian friendship center. Like when I was in high school, my mother made me take typing. This is not, this is part of the story. My mother made me take typing. She didn't want me to take art, which is what I wanted. Mm. I had to take typing so I could get a job. And I had this picture, you know, a little bag in a big room full of typists. And I thought there's no way. So I failed typing, consistently failed typing. I was the only kid who ever failed typing in the whole school. Um, but I got this job in Armstrong because I could type. I knew how to type. I just wasn't about to pass it. And um, what I did up there is just work with the community center. And I mean, the community, and I lived upstairs. Um, it was, it was an interesting, it was an interesting way to live because half the community was Caucasian and worked with the military. The other half of the community, and there were only 500 people all together, were First Nations. And uh, so there was always this stress. And it really uh, brought home a lot of truths about our country to me. And Interesting. Yeah, it was, uh, it was quite an adventure. Um, but that didn't last. I mean, it was a year. That's about all you could take. Mm -hmm. so that's, I only got paid, you know, what, $60 a month or something like this. Oh, gosh, yeah. This was in the 60s. It wasn't even living wage then. Right. It was in the 60s, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was early. No, nah, no. Late 60s, early 70s. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So that was me. And it's, 
but I've always sort of gone my own way. Mm -hmm. um, I've made my own choices. Uh, I chose not to learn to type uh, because I didn't want to do that kind of work. Uh, but I did wind up 35 years in an office yep. uh, as a bureaucrat. But then I, you know, I had a family, you know, mm -hmm. You, know, you yep. do these things with family. You needed an income. Yep, for sure. You needed an income, and it was a good income, and I did I did really well when I was there. And, yeah. Um, but, um, you know, still, you know, I bucked a lot of the, the um, uh, you know, the expectations. Mm -hmm. I didn't comply with a lot of the expectations. Like, I didn't go into management. Mm. Because I figured, I don't, I mean, I don't want, that kind of responsibility. I don't want to do that. I'd rather do my own thing, which was uh, quite a bit different. It was, you know, uh, it was it was a really good job. Excellent. It was so long ago. <laughs> yeah. So, so when you left that job, how mm -hmm. did you? I mean, how did you decide that you were going to keep going? Um, what happened? It's. I mean, I left, and I left without a plan, which is probably not wise. Um, but I just looked around and nobody was having fun. I wasn't having any wow. fun. And I decided, okay, I can leave and I'm out of here. So I just left. I said, okay, that's the date. And off I went. And, um, you know, I spent probably a year around the house sort of, you know, going out to do things and stuff. Mm -hmm. and this is really boring. And my husband had been working in this business for a long time. And I, I had used all the products and loved the products, loved the company, loved everything about it, but I never did it. Right. And I said, okay, well, I mean, I can help you. And I thought I could do communications because that's what a big thing that I was doing at work was gotcha. communications planning. And it just didn't work out. And I finally just said, okay, you know, I will work with you to build the business your way. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, you know, as you pointed out in the opening, uh, that meant I had to take that bureaucratic mindset. And if, if you out there are working in government or working in, in corporate America, corporate, or, yeah. absolutely. Or corporate Canada, yep. there's a way you think mm -hmm. and you know, the twain shall meet and with government, everything had to be planned. It had to be approved. Mm -hmm. It had to be reapproved. It had to be replanned. And just never got out the door. Um, but with business, it's sort of, you know, you've got to. It's at the speed of uh, it's at the speed of talk, actually. Right? actually. It really is. I mean, you think, oh, this is a really good idea. Well, do it. Yeah. You know, so don't just think it. Don't plan it. You know, have some idea, but just move on it. Yes. And that was such a hard, hard thing to to set your intention and go rather than plan it out. Uh, yeah. You know, and I struggled with that as well. When I left corporate America, mm -hmm. I had, I, you know, planning and structure doesn't come naturally to me, but I learned as thir after 30 years of project management, I learned how to be a lot more structured and how to track things and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I have been hesitant uh, there's one of the things about me and my business is I've been hesitant to move at the speed of talk. Uh, I've been telling myself, oh, I don't know enough. I haven't planned enough. And, and in fact, I do know enough. And um, if you set your intention out there and you move forward, things will, will fall into place. They do. And you do it with a certain energy and mm -hmm. people see that energy and they want to be a part of it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. the the company that I've been taking a lot of classes with, they their lingo around that is, you know, how you're being is more important than what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah, and I'm exactly. and I'm realizing that more and more, and I, and I love it. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. it makes life more fun and more interesting. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, um, what does a typical day look like for you? Oh, cheapers. <laughs> okay. If there is a typical day. <laughs> I get up at 5.30, mm. make the coffee. Mm. Then I spend about an hour or half an hour sort of doing some, I don't do meditation, but I do some, you know, some mind work. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, sort of plan the day, figure out what I'm going to do during the day. Then I spend a lot of time on my social media because that's a big part of what I do. Sure. Yeah, so yeah started on that early and 
you know, in the morning, I'm on calls with different people mm -hmm. doing our business. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just basically business all day. And yeah. Me, yeah. Is it a full-time day for you or is it a part-time day? No, it's a full-time day. It can yeah. be a part-time day, but, you know, you have your own business and it's great having your own business because you don't have a boss. Um, but the downfall is you don't have a boss. Yeah. Well, and you don't have anybody that you can. Yeah. When you're, yeah. When you're exactly. a small entrepreneur, you don't have anybody that you can say, please do that. You know, I recently got a virtual assistant, uh, Tiffany mm -hmm. Harness, and she's fantastic. Uh, and she helps me, she's a really good writer. And so she helps me write like blog posts and things like that. And, and she gives me really good ideas, mm -hmm. um, yeah. which I love. Um, however, you know, she's, she's very part-time and, um, and you know, I, I, there's things that I don't, you know, I can't push off to her because I need to do them myself. Yeah. 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 It's, um, it's great to, but you know, what I've been doing, I mean, it's, is learning a whole new way of doing things through social media. Mm -hmm. It certainly wasn't something I had ever planned to do, you know, five years ago. Yes. But in our business, it suddenly exploded and you either, you know, learn how to do it or you're out. Yeah. Or you don't get anywhere. So, um, so were you much on social media before then? So you would have been around 70 when you, when you like five, six years ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, before that, you know, I like a lot of people, you know, keep in touch with the kids, you know, the family, right. you know, friends, that sort of thing. Um, but then social media, I mean, hit our business and it's like, you gotta have, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of friends and thousands of friends. So mm. you start adding and, it's mm -hmm. just sort of like, holy crap, what am I doing here? You know? <laughs> but yeah. it, it's, um, and it's, you know, it's, it's constantly shifting. It is. It's always, I mean, you get used to doing one way and all of a sudden they change everything. You gotta, and it just keeps this going. It, keeps it does. Um, because I think what's really important, I mean, social media is just a part of our business, everybody's business now. Mm -hmm. um, but you've got to be able to take yourself out of it and give yourself a break from it. I mean, mm -hmm. it could be a, an hour, two hours, or whatever, but you can't just spend, you know, 12 hours, you know, glued to your phone or your computer. Mm -hmm. You've got to take a break because you, it does things to your brain. Yes. Your Being brain. on screens and thinking that way. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. But it's exciting. It, yeah, it is exciting. You know, my, my mother passed away of Alzheimer's and, um, I'm just, I, I was so worried about it. Um, I, I wrote a book last year and one of the chapters, it's called the thing that scares me the most. And it was about Alzheimer's and my mother. And yeah. I'm just really, uh, one of the reasons that I keep going and it's only a small reason. Most of it is for, is because I'm not done, right? I've got a lot of energy and I'm really smart and yeah. I, you know, I've got things to offer. Uh, but one part of it is I need to keep learning because that's one of the things that staves off um, cha brain changes uh, and brain mm -hmm. atrophy yeah. and stagnation is to keep learning new things every day. And so, you know, you're with social media and you're right. I mean, they change the algorithms all the time. What people think is cool changes all the time. And so you have to keep up with it. And that's really um, keeping your brain really active and, and building new synapses and all of that stuff. Absolutely. I mean, that is such an important part of keeping your brain working. Exercise is the other part. It's the, mm. the physical movement. That just yeah, blood flow. Moving. Yeah, really, really critical. And there are foods as well that um, keep the brain going. But um, what, what, what foods would you recommend? Oh, things I don't like. I hate vegetables. Um, <laughs> kale. Kale. Kale well. is one. Broccoli, you know, the cruciferous vegetables. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like broccoli. Blue ones. I, my husband has the list. He keeps track of that. <laughs> he's a guy who eats really, really well. Mm. And I sort of graze out of the fridge and he's eating, you know, salads every day for lunch. And that's. Oh, my husband does too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, which yeah. I'm grateful for. He's a year older than me. And if he, you know, they, they tend to live a shorter life. 
Although if he eats well and exercises all the time, then maybe we'll be equal. <laughs> Although I've had a, I've had my fair share of stress. It used to be that um, that women who were working at home, I don't I don't know that they had any less stress, but um, different kind of stress, I suppose. Um, yeah. But those of us who you know spent our lifetime in corporate or government, you know, we've we've got the same stuff. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm. but I'm planning to stay healthy. You know, my mother-in-law, whom I adore, she's going to be 98 in uh, August. And mm -hmm. she worked until she was well into her 80s. Yeah. And, uh, and she's to this day, she's starting to, you know, she's starting to slow down. But, hey, you know, <laughs> yeah, starting. She's on her computer every day. Good for her. That's great. That's I know. Great. I that's think so. me. That's going to yeah. be me. That's going to be yeah. me, too. That's going to be me, <laughs> too. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we have so much more to contribute. Oh. I mean, we, you know, our generation is so much healthier than our parents, except for yours. Mm -hmm. um, but and our, our grandparents and mm -hmm. you know, mindset is so different. We've got so much to contribute um, because, you know, we've got we've got the, the wisdom of our age. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, if we're working with people who are younger, we, you know, we've seen it happen. We know that some things will finish. I mean, there will be an end to that. Mm -hmm. It's not going to last forever. So don't panic. I've seen mm -hmm. this before. Mm -hmm. There's so much more to contribute. And, you know, we're not, you know, I think with a lot of people, you know, one or two generations down, it's sort of like, well, you know, there's 60, it's sort of like, you know. What do they know? What do they know? And, you know, they're just living in a big house all by themselves and they're wasting space and they're, you know, they should move into something small and where they're looked after. And and there's no way, there's no freaking way. Yeah. So it, it's funny. I was just in this 90 day program and I was older than everybody by at least 15 years. I think. Yeah. And um, certainly the pop culture, I don't know a lot about the pop culture beyond the age of my kids, which is like uh, 33 to 38. Mm -hmm. um, however, uh, I do know a lot about everything else that they're going through, you know, having a family, raising kids, yeah. worrying about money. What about my next job? All of those things and relationships. You know, I think that's where we have an advantage as we've seen and been through a lot of relationships yes. and, yeah. um, and we know ways through, you know, the rough patches, the sticky patches. And that's something that we can always help the younger generation with. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So we have to stay healthy, stay younger, stay active and stay contributing. And, and yeah. uh, I agree. And the world needs us. The world, absolutely. Yeah, the world needs us. And um, and the more we are present and saying, here we are, use me, yeah. the better. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's We've awesome. got so much to offer. And I'm just going to keep fighting so I can continue to offer it. Yep. I love and that. Even if it's just to my family and to you know, some people I bring into the business, that's yeah, that's good because it helps other people. Well, there is no just, you know, there is no just because every change, every interaction that we have creates a ripple effect. Yeah. And That's so right. helping yeah. one person helps many more than we will ever see. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's a really good thing. Anything else you want to add? We're going to wrap it up pretty quick. Okay. No, I'm, this has been a great conversation. I really appreciate it. Well, I have really enjoyed it and uh, I love your energy. I love your whole look. Um, you don't look 76 to me, although what does that look like anymore? I have no idea. Yeah. Um, and um, everybody, thanks for tuning in to Defying Expectations Over 60. If you're watching on replay, put a hashtag replay in the comments. If you're watching live, well, it's kind of late, but if you are watching live, put a hashtag live just so we know. And I will be putting Nikki's contact information um, on Facebook and on LinkedIn and on YouTube. So if you want to contact her um, for further conversation, uh, because as you can tell, she's a great conversationalist, then uh, you'll be able to. So uh, Nikki, thanks again Thank for, for being with us. 
And everybody, I will not be on next Tuesday, which is what, the 10th. Uh, my husband is turning 65 that day. And we are going to be in St. Bart's in the French West Indies, uh, sitting on the beach. So um, no, no, uh, no broadcast next week, but I will be back on, on the 17th. So um, I'll talk to you then. And thanks again, Nikki. Thank you. Mm -hmm.